for Best Music Coach. My name is Dan, and you are watching Guitar Teacher's Reaction live in real time. Wow. Ace Attorney Investigations, Miles Edgeworth. I know I just said that in the wrong order, but guess what? We are live, and I've never heard this music before. Not once, not ever, never, which means none of this is rehearsed. All my comments and observations are off the top of my head in the moment. Please hit like, subscribe, and that notification bell. You can support the channel by becoming a member. Check out our number one best-selling music books. Get 50% off your first music lesson at bestmusiccoach.com in the description below. Lastly, I do read comments. So please let me know what you think about my reaction, what you think about the OST, and of course what you would like to see next in the comments below. Make sure you hang out to the end of the stream to see my final reaction and summary. Let's kick this thing off, get rocking and rolling with Parola. So dramatic. Open it. I think what's interesting, yes, art from the chat, exactly. Different sound. Sounds like different sound quality, too. Love it, though. Also, interesting use of chromaticism so far, both in the prologue in here. Right. Black Game from the chat says this is a different composer, and I certainly buy that. Chat, type 1 if you want me to turn the volume down. Okay, how's this now? So what's really interesting in this piece is that there's all these different elements that are coming together to make the groove really happen and pop.
Mic check one two. All right. So absolutely loving the groove. Thanks everyone for moving and grooving with me with the uh, with the uh, discrepancy in volume here. Okay. So what's really interesting is to hear. This is definitely a different composer. You can you can hear the creative intentions, the gestures, everything so different. The way everything's structured is so radically radically different. Very interesting to hear the groove so far. Let's keep it going with middle game. Ah, oh, we groove. Ah. Uh. Okay. Really interesting use. Of dissonance. Where not every note and every instrument is from the same key or scale. I really do like the drum arrangement so far. I love it. Oh, that is delicious. Bass is driving. Oh, love it. Okay. So still really interesting use of dissonance here. Taking, and again, dissonance is kind of a subjective term, but essentially taking notes that are not from the key, not from the scale, and using them to great effect in the composition to create different textures and different feelings that you wouldn't be able to get if you just were using all the notes from the same key or the same scale. Now again, some smart person in here is going to be like, well actually technically it's a Mixolydian raised 276 scale. You know what I mean. You know, it's not like we just take 200 notes and then just like figure out a name for it. It's like, come on guys. We're not all Alan Holdsworth. <laughs> Man, these drums, I think are my favorite out of any Ace Attorney for it so far. Much more sort of realistic and more drummer -y.
off. So groovy. Both in like the 70s sense and also is in like the rhythmic sense. are just phenomenal. Okay, so let's talk about two things I'm going to, I feel like I am going to be pointing out a lot in this soundtrack. Number one is the mixing. So the mixing job on this soundtrack is phenomenal and highly complex. Now what I mean, what I mean by that is you're going to have one instrument show up in one place and then it's going to get louder, it's going to get quieter, it's going to show up in another place. That could also be down to the arrangement, but my personal feeling is sounds a lot like mixing but like I also said, could also be arrangement. Now, the second thing I'm going to be pointing out a lot is the way different musical elements are interacting with each other to create an incredible groove. So watch out for one particular rhythmic idea or one particular instrument to be the focus for a moment and then have that same idea and same instrument be pulled back and be a supporting element, but it's still doing the same thing. Awesome. Let's keep it moving and grooving with... The Way to Truth. Uh, 
I to hear the the little melody that started this off. It's still there. We're hearing other elements come in there. Kick starting to build. These sort of like guitar style things on the side. Now the drum patterns are becoming more stable, more consistent. This is really, this whole soundtrack so far is really reminding me of like funk fusion style inspirations. Like when you have those tutti lines where everyone's playing together. Tutti means all together. Very interesting there. They sort of did a odd, sounded like an odd measure or something there where a beat was skipped and then where we were used to hearing the strong and the weak beat got displaced by one. That or I got a little lost. I'm loving the drum fills too, like coming into these drum parts is exactly what I wanted from a lot of the previous games too. Oh, groove it. Investigation, core. Oh, yes. Oh, this piano groove reminds me of Taylor Eichstee. It's a kind of jazz, kind of fusion, a little pop, but really its own thing. Oh, we got like bongos now, maybe congos. But the difference from the Game Boy Advance, man. Just having those different hi hat sounds. Helper Car says it's a combination of jazz and funk. I call it junk. <laughs> nah, man. Funk fusion. That's funny, though. Jello says, I prefer fans. What like fans? <laughs> Junk's pretty funny though. Listen to the 
interaction between the bass and the low piano. Very interesting to have two low instruments down at the same time and it's working. Hey guys, add to your playlist for listening Taylor Eichsty, pianist, incredible composer. His latest album is True Falls. It'll remind you a lot, you, you'll see the connection. Very interesting chunking sound in the left ear right now. Oh, yes, please. So interesting that the descending line we have here is skipping the seven. We heard in previous Ace Attorneys it go one flat seven, flat six, five. Here we're just going one flat six, five so far. All right, this may be controversial, but so far this is my favorite OST from all the Ace Attorneys that we've listened to so far. I'm really, really enjoying this a whole lot, but I'm also, a like, personally, I really love the sort of funk fusion type thing, the Hellboy Lane and Sype, the Greg Howe, the Alan Holdsworth, all that good stuff. Uh, let's keep it going with Tricks and Gimmicks. Oh my gosh. Like, the creative consciousness in these drums.
Ah, yes. The whole thing feels like it's four over three. It's like it, that's how it feels. It just feels like a giant polyrhythm. Yeah, it just feels like past the stinking butter, which, by the way, is how we know four. Over now, okay, what do I mean by past the stinking butter? What do I mean by a polyrhythm? Polyrhythm is when you have uh, two separate rhythms uh, happening at the same time, two separate pulses that are each happening at even intervals of time, but that they line up every couple of beats so like four over threes right so there's three happening on one four happening on the other so cool it uh, that's what it sounded like was going on in that piece of music okay this next one is objection okay Another interesting thing we have going on in the chords here is we have a lot of harmonizing of different modes and scales with chords with ascending and descending gestures. And let's celebrate our first orchestra hit of the soundtrack. We had a bop, 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 bop. Well, right there, that last word, not sure. But, right there, that's like harmonizing up the, uh, possibly Dorian. Also, you harmonize the Splitian. I mean, it's all relative. Absolutely loving, loving, loving this. The next one is called Allegro. 
Which incidentally, I think salamanders can do that. So I remember those strings from a previous one. I love those little piano fills back into things. Yeah, Lucas, uh, yeah, hey. Very uh, sort of Billy Jean esque, isn't it? The string on the left ear is supposed to be a guitar. That right there. I like distortion. All right. This next one is called Announce the Truce. Man, the piano is not messing around on the soundtrack. Oh! Oh! Oh, this is majestic. Oh, please drop a beat on this. that type of song. Oh, look out now. Ah. Have like a sharp nine chord at the end there. Love it. JT Paper! Thank you so much for your generous super chat. Oh! 
Okay, absolutely loving this. All right, JT Paper says, Objection is probably the clearest example of the soundtrack using Miles's motif, which I'm not sure which motif is, but okay. Uh, but be on the lookout for more. Okay, so we're going to look out for all the elements we just heard in that last one to show up in other places. The OST is filled with them. Thank you, JT Paper. Okay, let's keep it rocking and rolling. And shout out to Jacob King, staunch supporter member for three months. Thank you for your support. I mean, that was announced the truth that we just listened to. Sorry about that, uh, JT paper. <laughs> Rex and Baroque, this one. This feels like a bunch of two over threes over and over again. Maybe I misspoke the first time I said two over three. Anyway. Yeah, two over three. But if you do four over three, like, much slower, okay. It, you essentially have, like, a hemiola-style thing where you have two different feelings happening at the same time. And you can scale it down to two over three, you can scale it up to four over three. In terms of how you're perceiving the pulse. Remember before at the beginning I said, I'm not sure if it's the mix or the arrangement. I'm definitely saying now it's the arrangement. Obviously mix plays a part, but in terms of the genius of how everything's moving around, it feels like arrangement. This one is called Confrontation. Presto. This is a rhythmic motif that we've heard a lot. So what's interesting is that we have chord movements that are showing up as thematic elements. We also have rhythms that are showing up as thematic elements. Would anyone like to dance the polka? Now's the time. Oh my goodness.
Oh my goodness. That run gets me every time. Absolutely loving it. This next one is called Pursuit Lying Coldly. Again, harmonized chords. Interesting how the drums are pulled back here to really let the quarter out chordal elements stand out. Like you notice the snare is a clean snare, it doesn't even have the snare on it. There's this instrument going right there. You can hear it. It sounds like when you hit a PVC pipe with uh, ping pong paddles. Okay, this next one is Jingle. It's going to be quick. Cool. This one is called K Faraday. Faraday Cage, maybe? The Great Truth Burglar. Those low instruments are just grooving like an engine underneath. Ooh, 
what's really interesting is those percussive elements in the left ear and the right ear. Right ear sounds like I had left ear is metallic. We also heard the sleigh bells in this one, which are not actually sleigh bells. It's a traditional Japanese instrument, as I have been educated. Right there. Bum, 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 bum. Sounds like maybe taiko drums there. That was a lot of fun. This next one is called Shi Long Lang, Speak Up Pup. Ah. I think this sax was based on Dave Sanborn there. It's like Dave Sanborn plus if Hiram Bullock had actually been like a metal player. <laughs> Not that he couldn't have been or he never did, but when he was playing with um, Dave Sanborn, he wasn't. Man, this song is riftastic. All right, now patience with me on this next one. This one is called Yata Garasu. Yata Garasu, the thief who dances. The gentleman thief who dances in the black man. Yata Garasu. Essentially, a callback to that same rhythmic element. Bop, 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 bop. Before we had three in a row, three groups of two. Now we have two groups of two. Here it is. One, two, one, two. Yeah, guitar with a slide. 
I don't think we've heard a slide, slide, slid in note. S slide in note. A slitty note. A note that hath been slid. in there might be actually recorded because those slides sound really real I don't think I've ever heard a mini guitar do slides that are that good yeah CJ the instrument in the in the well in the lead we, we can unpack that later but yeah that's that's a nylon string guitar Similar delay here to the first song that we heard. is sus right there that was a sus chord huh. short and sweet that one that was turnabout airlines oh because we heard somebody turn about the previous one the next one is called zinc leblanc Time is money. Let's turn back around. This next one is Sync LeBlanc. Time is money. I'm getting some serious Middle Eastern vibes here now. Be specific about where. It's kind of a uh, general Middle Eastern sort of gesture here. Okay, 
Interesting. The second one is called Cami Mealy, not Malay. There's two E's and an L E. Good night. With two This next one is called Doubted People. sounds. Those are pizzicato strings. Which means instead of playing a violin viola with the bow, pluck it with your fingers. Now, the sound you're hearing in between that's playing the chords is not a piano, it's a harpsichord. Which is an instrument from before the piano was around which plucks the strings instead of striking them. The harpsichord itself is not Baroque, but the harpsichord can be used in various styles, eras of classical music. Well, someone fact-checked me on that. When was the harpsichord invented, chat? Anyone know? Can someone Google real quick? Or search real quick, I should say? Thirteen fifty six for the invention of the harpsichord. Fifteen hundred says Zach the, the Jolteon. Thanks, chat. This next one is called Swept Away Turnabout Overture to Kidnap Kidnapping? Uh oh.
short and sweet. This next one is called Blue Badger March, Bandoland theme. I agree with you, Valdis, that this does sound triumphant. Jane says this is the jingle from uh, the Ace Attorney 1 bonus case. I don't remember that. It was a long time ago. This next one is Swept Away Turnabout, Tragedy in the Horror House. Okay, so the reason why I said, all right, is it in 2-4 or 2-2? Oh, thank you. All right, so chat, the reason I said, all right, is it in 2, 2, or 2, 4? It's because sometimes it's all just down to what the composer writes on their sheet music that determines whether it's in 2, 4, or 2, 2. I wouldn't call that 4, 4, because that march really does have that sort of very strong, weak, strong, weak type of a thing, which would be 
the order and the hierarchy, the metric hierarchy of 2-4 as well as 2-2. I think what it comes down to is, okay, how fast was it going? Because if it was going particularly fast, then you might want to make the beat unit the half note as opposed to the quarter note. And that way you can almost think of you're scaling up all the notes by 100%. So the quarter note becomes a half note, the eighth note becomes a quarter note, a uh, 16th note becomes eighth note, 32nd becomes 16th, and so on. It can make it a lot easier for people to read at a fast tempo. But other than that, to truly know whether it was 2, 4, or 2, 2, at this point, I don't think we can solidly say, but I might be wrong. And if I am, let me know in the comments. Okay, let's go for music, noisy people. Yeah, so Fedora the Explorer is saying some sections really elongated the music and stretched it out. Therefore, Fedora is saying because it was slower, they think 2-4 as opposed to 2-2. Two, two. Whereas if it was really fast, Fedora might say 2-2. Two, two. Circus-ish. opening the circus music. So, a gesture we heard there, that's like the start of circus music. Interesting people. Interesting people. Interesting people. Singing a happy song. Very Super Mario. JT Paper, number one, it's using the same chord progression. Number two, some of the melodic gestures are very similar. Well, chord progression is mostly the same. But that's not saying much because the chord progression is taken from basically like Caribbean style of music, and it's used in a bunch of other songs. But having those melody notes, Like that, those first two notes be the same as Super Mario. Okay, this next one is called Reminiscence False Relations. Back to our nice delay. 
So the delay is hit that button. Hear that little echo? That's the delay. So JT Paper, not quite. Delay is an effect that's put on a single instrument that then creates, it's like an automatic echo for that instrument. So you didn't play the instrument with echo. When you put the delay on the instrument, it sounds like it has that echo. This next one is called Reproducing the Scene, The Gentleman Thief's Secret Weapon. Oh, this is cool. Listen to how the bass is changing around, well, the bass. Now this bass reminds me of Donkey Kong. I think this bass reminds me specifically of <coughs> that temple level in Donkey Kong Country. You know, we have to get all those tires to do those big jumps and the ropes. 
I could be misremembering. This next one is called Guardians of the Lao. Of the Lao. Guardians of the Lao. Organ sounds a lot like like in the past. All right, we're back to crew. Strutting along. Building it. Oh, organ to switch gears. That's back here. Oh, this is so weird. I feel like I'm doing a hearing test. Oh gosh, this so reminds me of Gino Vanelli. Oh gosh, this is so Gino Vanelli. Oh, this, oh my gosh. Hit it on the head. Gino Vanelli, I Walk the Night, that entire EP. This, that's what this reminds me of. Yeah. There's that organ that's in the right ear. See if I move it. So far, still right ear. Left ear. Now back to the right ear. This next one is called Turnabout or Turnabout.
Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Music. Carol Bad. The truth isn't sweet. Yeah, Jello, exactly right, St. Anger Snare. He got that 100% on the money. <laughs> Man, that is a brutal hi hat. Love the groove on that one. This next one is Castillo U. Let me laugh at the cool. Ha ha ha. Oh, look out. That hi hat got me uh, thinking something a little different was about, was about to hit. I think it's our first swing tune of the track, the OST, excuse me. mistaken this is the first drum solo we have ever heard in all the ace attorney soundtracks
So from what I understand, in the coming soundtrack, when we move to the 3DS, we have a full band, so I'm really looking forward to hearing this type of music with a full band. Also, it sounds to me like there's something wrong with that hi Okay, not wrong with that hi-hat, but I think it's like backwards. I think the I think the pattern is displaced by an eighth note from what it typically is. Could be wrong, but something doesn't feel quite right there. This next one is called KG8. Case. Reminiscence. This one is called Crisis of Fate. Right there, that's the right pattern for that hi-hat. Now I say right. It's not right or wrong. It's one man's opinion. Gosh, these synths are so interesting. Yes, Adam DX, those are the orchestra hits from Big Shot. Now's a chance. Now's a chance. Now's a chance. Hear that drum? Very interesting piece of music. This next one is called 
Uh, Dick Gumshoe, I can do it when it counts, pal. Almost sounds like there's two bases. I'm gonna dump, gump, gump, gump up here, and the other bass is down here playing the notes. It sounds like this one has all the low end rolled off it. This next one is called Turnabout Ablaze or Turnabout Ablaze. This next one is called Torn Apart. No, excuse me. The Lands of the Butterfly and the Flower. Like, this doesn't sound like a Torn Apart. I'm expecting something like Doom.
I thought that was beautiful and really well done. This next one is Reminiscence Torn Apart Countries. The time signature that was in was 3 4. Timpani in there. Same line in the violas now. Bases. Sus. Damn. Interesting. Okay, let's talk about a couple. I'm so sorry to the composer. I just talked over your beautiful ending. Oh, shame. Shame. Okay, now, number one, don't worry about spoiling this game, guys, because you know how I can't remember the theme that I heard a month ago? I'm not going to remember anything you say in this chat when I actually go around to play the game. So don't worry about it. Y'all have fun. You don't need to worry about protecting me from spoilers because I quite simply am not going to remember it by the time I get there. Okay, look, let's talk about what I mean by sus chords. Okay, so you can actually sing along with this at home. Da, 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 da. We have one, two, three, four, five, four, three, two, one. Now, what happens? Sorry if the guitar's out of tune. We're just playing here. So, all right. Now we play one, three, five all together. That gets us a major chord. Now, what happens is if we take three and we bring it up to four, so one, two, three, four. So instead of playing one, three, five, we play one, four, five. That's a sus4. And what happens is sus4 chords, or sus chords, then come back to the 1, 3, 5. Now we can also do the same thing with the 2. Instead of going 1, 3, 5, which we normally do for a major chord, we can go 1, 2, 5. We play that all together. 1, 2, 5, that makes a sus2 chord. So a lot of times you'll hear
And what that is, that sus for, sus for, sus for, sus for resolves to three. So whenever I say there's a sus chord, it's typically a sus four chord that I'm hearing in the music. I'm like, oh, it's a sus chord. And then typically, not all the time, it then resolves to the one, three, five. Okay, let's keep it rocking and rolling with uh, Cursus Alba, the enemy who surpasses the law. Okay, now some of you might be wondering, because I've asked myself the same question, why don't I do like what the 8-Bit Drummer does? He's an awesome YouTuber. If you're into drums, check him out. If you're into video game music, go check him out. Really cool, really cool guy. Really awesome drummer. Now, he can play along with pretty much any song because he doesn't have to worry about harmony. And if the tempo stays the same, and even if the time signature stays the same, the whole thing, like he's pretty much good to go. But here's the thing, if you're playing a melodic or harmonic instrument and there's key changes you don't know coming up, there's modulations you don't know coming up, all of a sudden that can totally mess with being able to play along with something in real time. So maybe we'll try something like that in the future, but for right now, uh, it would kind of have to be like you pick songs ahead of time that you're going to play along with. But to do songs by request would be a dangerous, dangerous thing. Because like throughout this soundtrack, you hear how things modulate. So if I was just to pick my guitar and play along, I wouldn't know when the modulation is coming. There isn't like a little flag or something that says, by the way, the key's about to change. So you have no way of knowing. All right, this next one is Solution, Splendid Deduction.
very interesting there. That almost sounded like a mistake there. That was really interesting. It wasn't a mistake though, definitely intentional by the composer. That little almost tripping over that chromatic note there, very interesting. Nicholas, welcome member. Here's yes, next is Miles Edgeworth. The Great Revival. out. brass. I think this is the first time I've had some like real solid brass. I mean we had some on the like the trend things. A little uh, bluesy thing in the bass right there.
Yeah, bass. That was a ton of fun. This next one is called Prosecutor's Murmur, Promise to Meet Again. like so Michael Bolton very pop love it someone does that I'm like take me to the four like let's go the four chord that is
friends, I'd like to say thank you so much for hanging with me on this stream today. I know the time is coming near for us to bid each other adieu. I'm sure we'll meet again someday soon. Make sure you hang out until the very end of this stream to hear my final reaction and summary. But isn't it fun to speak with this kind of voiceover over this kind of music at the end of something? And make sure you hang out for the end of the stream for my final reaction and summary. Thank you all so much for watching. Please hit like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. You can support this channel by becoming a member. Thank you to everyone who did incredible super chats and comments in this stream so far. Thank you, chat. You've been awesome. I've been Dan for Best Music Coach. So my final thoughts and reaction. Look. Honestly, this was my favorite OST from the Ace Attorney universe so far. I love the groove. I love the arrangements. I'm just, especially like maybe the first 15 tracks on this, incredible, right up my alley. Love it, love it, love it. Some really interesting uses of some rhythmic motifs, some chord gesture motifs or themes that kept on coming back. Now, how do I rank all of them so far? Well, I'll tell you, this is my favorite. I like number one, maybe sec uh, maybe number three. Number three was good. I don't know how to rank order these. I'll tell you what, I'll just let you guys know when we get to a new favorite, if we get to a new favorite. If not, this was my favorite so far. In summary, an incredible, incredible OST that I really, really enjoyed a whole lot on a personal level, as well as just doing this as a stream and hanging out with chat. Chat, thank you so much for your support on this stream. Thank you to everyone from the Ace Attorney and the best guitar coach and best music coach communities out there who've come through and support me on these uh on these streams and supporting this content. I really, really appreciate it. It means the world to me. Thank you all so much. It really is a privilege to be able to do this and continue to do this. And I'll see you all all next week, if all goes according to plan, for your next stream. I'll see you guys then.